MTD CNC, bringing you the latest engineering news via video media. Mike, JLR, what a UK success story. What, what have you been trying to get across today at this event? Well, we're in a new era, as I see it at the moment. It's an era, a new era of new technologies, and it's a new era of the political system that we're in as well. And what I'm really trying to get across today at this event is really confidence. Jaguar Land Rover is confident in our future. We've invested over the last 10 years uh, billions of pounds. The last five years, 10, 10 billion in the UK alone. And that investment's continuing into the UK. We're investing in our research and development centres at Whitley, at Gaydon, and our engine, our engine manufacturing centre at Wolverhampton, as well as keeping the production at the current high level that we've got and improving the levels of production at Solihull, Castle Bromwich, and Halewood. So tell me about your supply chain. I mean, how many tier one suppliers would you have? Uh, at the tier one level, uh, there are precisely, because I've just counted them, 655, uh, of which many of them have a UK base. And is that growing? Uh, the UK base, I would say, is growing at a steady rate. Uh, if I take uh, average production level for all our vehicles, uh, if you measured that as of last year, it was 50%. Then you look at the new vehicles that are coming out, such as the F-Pace, the Jaguar XC, uh, and some that I can't mention because they're not in the public eye yet, that's grown to 55%. So it's a measurable growth. Uh, for UK sourcing, and which is fantastic news for the UK supply chain in the automotive sector, because it means they're competing well. They're doing the right things to win the business. And how do you get into that supply chain, Mike? It's not easy. You've got to do the legwork. It's as simple as that. Some suppliers start off uh, at a very low level, perhaps supplying into prototyping, uh, talking to our engineers, talking to people like myself, making contacts. Uh, or they may go into special, uh, specialised vehicles, our SVO division, uh, and they'll build their businesses up. We're always looking for new ideas, we're always looking for a new innovation, and it's fantastic to see when a supplier comes to us and they say, I know your current source of supply, which means they've done their homework, but I've got this, and it's cheaper and it performs better. That's like music to my ears, because I know there's going to be a supply chain relationship that's going to build up that supply. It's not often uh, as a first tier commercial relationship. It might be a case of me introducing them to our, our engineers uh, and introducing them to our tier ones where that, that supply will, will follow through. And there's nothing that makes me happier, probably not the greenest thing to say, as seeing new factories going up in the United Kingdom. And that, that's my bread and butter. That's what I do for a living. It's trying to convince uh, whether it's from foreign direct investment or domestic growth, uh, new factories, new capacity, new R&D facilities in the United Kingdom, of which we've had many examples, over a billion pounds invested. I've currently got a portfolio of quarter of a billion pounds of investments coming into the UK yet to be delivered. And you've grown year on year since 2008. Is that going to continue? It's definitely going to continue. Obviously, I can't, I can't tell the future. Uh, I'm not a, a soothsayer. Uh, but if we're putting down the investment, which I can guarantee is continuing, so the investment's continuing at a, a level of about £3 billion a year. We'd actually like to spend more than that and grow it to £4 billion a year, uh, but there's only so much that we can do. Uh, and we'll, we'll certainly strive to continue to grow that. And as any shareholder that wants return from their investment, and that means growth, that means more jobs, and that's good news for the UK. Training in the youth of today, that's a big thing for you guys as well, isn't it? It's something that we take very seriously. Uh, certainly as, as Jaguar Land Rover, we have something like 300,000 people of young people come through our doors in the last five years. That's an amazing amount of people. Uh, it's tours in the factories, it's getting out into the schools as well and doing presentations there, getting people excited about manufacturing. And the way we do it, we actually use our brand. We use the Jaguar Land Rover brand to actually advertise the jobs available in our supply chain, which don't have those strong brands that people recognise. But if you say they're making a component for Jaguar and Land Rover, then all of a sudden the young people are interested. We get thousands and thousands of applications for, for a few hundred jobs, a few hundred opportunities at JLR for young people. Obviously not everyone can be successful, but it's about the message. It's not just Jaguar Land Rover. There's a whole supply chain, uh, which is in the region of about three to four times the uh, 
the employment that Jaguar Land Rover has at its sites uh, out there and they've got opportunities. And I'll I do actively encourage all our suppliers to run apprenticeship programs, to run graduate programs, and they're doing it. I can actually visit a supplier today, the same one that I visited five years ago, and I can see the change in demographic that's happened, and that's joy for myself as well. And what about Brexit? How's that going to affect things? Uh, I don't think it's going to affect things at all. It's caused a level of uncertainty, uh, naturally. We've seen stock markets go down, we've seen exchange rates go down, but we've seen manufacturing jump back in the UK generally. Uh, there, there are some, some hidden benefits with exchange rates. Uh, it's, it's actually uh, cheaper to export uh, products out of the UK at the moment, and we are a massive exporter. So it's business as usual. We haven't changed our business plan. Our business plan has been set down quite a few years ago. We're on track, we're delivering it, and, it, and we're moving forward. And, and if you had to summarise the key, or, what, or one or two of the keys to the success of the JLR brand, what would you say? Investment, investment, investment. It's investment in research and development for the products of the future. It's investment in capacity to get the customers what they want. And it's investment in the people so they can feed that capacity and that research and development work. You've got to invest to be a success. You can't, if you're not investing, uh, you'll be moving backwards, not standing still. Good stuff. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much, Paul.